I know you boys is in there. I give you the count of ten. One, two. Who you think you're talking to? Merriam-Webster's Encyclopedia of Literature defines Southern Gothic as a style of writing practiced by many writers of the American South, whose stories set in that region are characterized by grotesque, macabre, or fantastic incidents. Flannery O'Connor, Tennessee Williams, William Faulkner, Truman Capote, and Carson McCullers are among the most famous writers associated with that unique genre. But that genre would be revamped as a ten-chapter movie serial many miles to the north in the oldest township in the state, North Bergen, New Jersey, sandwiched between the Hudson River to the east and the famed Meadowlands to the west. Proclaimed one of Governor Jim McGreevy's top 25 schools of New Jersey, high tech can boast of a student body that excels in many areas, from science and computer animated drafting to performing arts. CAS Prep serves a community of young learners with specific needs that traditional schools and curricula do not necessarily address. Each student brings a unique experience to the classroom he or she attends. When Mr. Gutman approached me with his idea of Southern Gothic, I thought it was a very daunting proposition. Uh, I also had a great deal of admiration for Mr. Gutman and Mr. McCauley's foresight and vision of making uh, a pilot, which ultimately then turned into, I believe, 10 pilots of Southern Gothic. And this is a remarkable accomplishment for a high school. Well, I, I, I thought it was just incredible because one of the important things that I believe a high school should accomplish uh, with its students is to teach them how to work together and to understand how to work effectively when they are in high school as well as when they go on to college and into the world of work by using various aspects of our school including computer assisted drafting, TV production, our music department, our art department. They actually worked as people would work in, a, in the film industry uh, within various departments. And I think it also increases each student's understanding and appreciation of any other student's interest or major. So that the sets are completely up with the lights have been tweaked, maybe even do like a light run through. The cameras are all in position, the board is been working. Basically spent from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock as a preemptive rehearsal. One of the things we had done, and we had suggested this a couple years ago, this is the first year we actually had a chance to implement it, was to bring in professional actors. Um, for one thing, a school is supposed to be about enriching the community, not just your students, but also the community around it. You got it? Did you get it? Back to your chores, Lucinda. Back to your chores, Lucinda. Yes, sir. How far until we reach your house? Once we round this pass, only a few miles, if memory serves me correctly. You mean you forgot where you live? You mean you forgot where you live? <laughs> so, what's become of your righteous campaign, sir? 
Y'all get to the south in the proverbial mob yet? Concentrate on the kids. The Mexican boy will hang for sure. We should have saddled a pair of horses ourselves. I declare, the comforts of home this is not. Stella, how can I keep a clear head with all those heavenly Georgia boys occupying? Closing up in 10 minutes, Ben. Almost through, Mr. Maitwan, but Master Vickers needs his olives. Behind you, on your right. Ben! Yes, sir? You best get that half-breed out of your mind fast. Let go. That doesn't belong to you. I said let go. But it gives me such joy, Mama. No! Let it go! Let it go! Stop it! It's not yours! And it ain't yours neither! If I'm gonna take Buford to task, he better show his hide in here and now. Now go fetch his drunken self. If I'm gonna take Buford to task, he better show his hide in here and now. Now go fetch his drunken self. Buford isn't here, sir. Where is he then? Without spending more of my notes on whores and moonshine? With the assistance of Danny Beecher and Ozzy Alvarez, two specialists at all types of construction at the school, Akash Shaw, Neil Shaw, Fred Kaur, Corey Minaveri, and Ryan Woods, all of whom volunteered to design sets and props with little or no understanding of design, became experts overnight. The first attempt at construction began in April, the Monday following Easter Sunday to be precise. Thanks to the dogged efforts of high-tech math teacher Danny Rakow, a former construction worker himself, students created a truly stunning mantle that would come to be the centerpiece of the Mosby Parlor set. Ironically, it cost no more than $60, which included labor and parts, too. With the mantle ready for shooting, the issue of what would hang over it had to be addressed. The script called for the colonel's portrait. Uh, I did a sketch of the colonel for the portrait scene. Uh, I used pencil, and it's mostly shading. We took pictures of the colonel first, and then we like two pictures, like the head of one and the body of the other. So we just cut it off <laughs> apart and stick it together. A junior then, Kathy proved to be ideal for sketching the colonel. Kathy couldn't devote the time necessary to paint the portrait, however. Bill Kennan stepped in, volunteering his immense talent and painting the portrait for the crew. Um, the portrait for the uh for the set had to be an oil painting. It's more traditional. And um, Kathy didn't have any experience working with oils, so ultimately I painted the oil portrait uh, based on Kathy's uh, drawing. Um, locations were all shot at the school in the Black Box Theater, the J. Todd Black Box Theater here at the Hudson County Schools of Technology. And um, again, this is showing the, uh, the brilliance of the creator of this project. Uh, not only is he a phenomenal producer and writer, but he's also a phenomenal art director. And with the help of some freshmen, and, and we even had students who weren't even starting their freshman year yet that were involved in this, but um, got wind of it, or the parents got wind of it and thought, hey, I really want to get my kid in on this. And we said, sure, the more the merrier. You know, all we ask is that you have a professional attitude, and uh, it's a go. My name is John Cole. I was the director of photography on Southern Gothic. Uh, my role was pretty much to do the live switching right here with the MX-50. Uh, three monitors plus the main monitor. Got to pick my shot as I went. Uh, I could do dissolves, wipes, anything I wanted. Um, pretty much it was the preliminary cut to cut down on editing time. I was also the principal editor on episode one. I finished up as much as humanly possible before the end of the summer. And that's about it. Principal photography on the first two episodes in the Southern Gothic serial wrapped on August 5th. All but one of the featured actors agreed to return to shoot the remaining episodes starting in autumn 2004. Here we have a scene of a horse running where the second unit crew went to shoot in Central Jersey. As you can see, they had they set up two C stands 
with the green screen stretched in between the two stands. And then they had the horse run past the screen. So now in post-production we can crop out the green here, the square of the green where the horse runs past it, and we can apply a background to the green so it'll, it'll give the effect that the horse is running wherever we really want it to. The capabilities of our computers here and our students and how they create actual 3D models that are virtual on the computer, we can animate them, we can uh, we can, uh, as we animate them, we render them so they, they look like they're actually moving on the screen and then uh, Mr. McCauley and uh, Mr. Gutman said they can chroma key that they're actual uh, students or actors into the scene and just like they do on uh, television or in the movies. In spite of some shortcomings, students still exercised their creativity when it came time for post. With the initial cuts done, all that remained were incorporating the visual effects, Foley effects, and of course, the soundtrack. Um, we were very pleased about the fact that we were able to bridge a gap between the schools at Hudson County Schools of Technology, where it was, um, it was workspace for high-tech students, CAS prep students, and also students from other schools in Hudson County. If you want to know the bottom line about why this school and these tools are better than other high schools, bottom line is this, is that we can sit down and talk to the administrators, and not just Mrs. Brancata, the principal, or Mr. Duran, the other principal, or the vice principals. We can talk to all four of them. We can come in and say, can I talk to you? Sure. Sit down and tell them what's going on. Okay. I can do the same thing with the superintendent. And I also answer to my uh, benevolent leadership of uh, Carol Brincado and uh, Thomas Grady and um, well, I should, uh, Jim Duran and Thomas Colleen and of course the ultimate high guru, Sir Frank Gargiulo. Okay. okay, action. Silver bullets. She changed them. Buford's dead, he's undead. Buford's dead, he's undead. Buford's dead, he's undead. Crap! Just what do you think you're doing, Buford Daddy? Buford's dead, he's undead. Buford's dead, he's undead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mark it. Episode 4, Scene 6, C, Take 4, Row 11. Stand by! Alright, call it! Action! Young Snopes, draw closer. Time is very short. Excuse me, is this the um, Egyptian Cairo Hotel? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>